had you gone to a chiropractor before me? No, uh, just like one. He didn't really say anything, so. He didn't really tell you anything? I didn't like him too much. No. This is your second visit with me. You came in saying that you had right-sided numbness and tingling, or was it just like a loss of feeling? Uh, basically like a, like a, when I say numb, I don't want to say like the whole area is dead, but it feels like the first few layers of skin are numb, if that makes like, sense. Like, can you almost feel the sensation of your skin because you're not feeling yeah. like your yeah. hand on it, so it will kind of feel like, oh, I'm feeling my skin. Yeah, yeah, my back can't feel it, but my fingers can. Your can't, fingers you know? can, right. And that's a, exactly. Okay, so we did work on this on Friday. It's yes. now Monday. Were you sore afterwards? I was sore for like, yeah, a good two days. Um, oh, this feels better. But it feels like the inflammation itself has definitely gone down. It's not bothering me as much, but as the last 48 hours, it did come back a little bit. Okay. Um, you're, you're, the numbness or the f sensation of not being able to feel? Um, yeah, and it, it just feels like it gets a little inflammation like down here, like especially in here. Um, At the base of your scapula? And when you say inflammation, what does it feel? Are you just like tender? Yeah, very, very tender. Yeah. Does it hurt when Swelled I push? Up, kind of. Not when you push, no. If anything, it gets um, some relief if I massage it or something like that. Okay. Um, did you manage to get like a two um, baseballs and a sock I or did. anything? So I've been using a tennis ball okay. for now um, and a soup can. I actually went home and I like, crushed the soup can on my back last time. Because so <laughs> that's how hard you were pushing? Yeah, so I started keeping with a tennis ball and a baseball. Okay, so this... I'm, yeah, that? Okay, yeah. So this time what I'm feeling is just one individual rib right here. When he came in last time, it was about five ribs from T2 all the way down to T7 and T8 that were just kind of popped up like this. And you said that that was an old accident when you were in high school. Yeah. He twisted and he popped the ribs out and since that about how long ago about five years ago now. five yeah, years ago it's okay been a while. and he since then he hasn't been right he's been having this sensation now the first time he came in it felt like this whole area was swollen now this swelling i mean this was so swollen last time it was. i wish we had a picture of it but i mean it's still a little swollen right here i'm not sure if you can see that Lydia. it's just this is this is the vertebral prominence right here but his is right here, and there's some swelling around that. This is about 50% reduced. It was like a goose egg on the back of your neck. It this has gone Absolutely. way down. So it might be starting to, you know, get inflamed again, and we got to go back and reset mm -hmm. the middle of the spine again. Okay, so on your back face up, and it's important for people to know, you know, when you feel numbness and tingling, if the source of it is outside of the spinal cord, there's a good chance that we can regain the sensation and the feeling back, but when it's in the central nervous system or inside the spine, if the nerve has been compromised there, we can't gain that back. So we're gonna try to get as much as we can of the peripheral nervous system to come back and to, to regain, to kind of make that connection so the nerve can come back and reconnect. I wish, I wonder if they would allow me to show how the nerve regrows. It's very fascinating. As long as the little tube is still there, the nerve can regrow. But sometimes, you know, it's been five years, I don't know if it can. It's almost like I gotta open it back up and see if it can reconnect mm -hmm. again. Which, as long as it's on the peripheral nervous system, they call it the PNS, CNS. Should have found you a few years ago. Yeah, it's important to get to somebody as soon as you can. Um, it doesn't mean that we can't do it. It just, it's now slower, a little, little longer, a little bit more of a process. How's your neck? How's your neck doing? Oh, sorry. Neck's fine. Uh, neck's pretty good. It's, you know, down, down here at the on base the right still. side, exactly. Okay. But that's, well, okay. that's about it. So, what I always explain to people on YouTube is that We've got to get the upper part of the neck moving to take the pressure off of the lower neck. That's the most important thing. Um, even though I'm what they call a mixer chiropractor, I adjust every, you know, all the joints, toes, fingers, and everything, I still think upper cervically. And what I mean by that is I really try to adjust, uh, uh, address which way the upper neck moves and how it's subluxated 
Um, the subluxation is just the misalignment, okay? I'm sure you feel more stiffness here. Here's the right-hand side. And you might feel over here. I mean, look at that. It's like, woo, plenty of flexibility over here. And then over here, I don't know, it's like, we've like, uh, we hit a wall. And that's, I'm on the joint, the, you know, and I'm trying to wiggle it. Joints like to be wiggled. I'm trying to get that to come loose. Because I'm going to crack it in a little bit. And then we're really going to make it come loose. <laughs> and you haven't really been lifting weight since? No, not, not nearly as much. Not any time recently, definitely. So you didn't have any kind of coaches in high school to coach you so through I it? So actually, I, I did have one at the time, um, and he was like, man, you have to go in and, and see someone. Like, I can see, it was very prominent when it happened. He could see the difference um, immediately. And I, I just ignored it. I iced it. I tried for it to go away, and for a while it did, and I want to say I re-injured it one day, and it's never been the same since. Um, so I really wish I took that advice, like you said, and got in there as, as soon as I could. I was young at the time. I was, you know, not being smart about it. Well, yeah, I mean, you generally, I say you got 72 hours to really make a difference on something that happens right away. I only got about seven. Just to anybody who's watching, you know, you got, you got about 72 hours to do something. And then it kind of gets set in. Your body's like, I got this, you know, I'm going to do what I'm going to do, you know. If you're going to leave me with my arm hanging off, I'll figure out a way to adapt. Look, me in the body, he's pretty cool. Yeah, thank God he didn't lose an arm. No, no, he has no weakness in his arms and his strength. It's just, I almost want to say some of the thoracic nerves got torn in maybe the trapezius and latissimus muscle. And they are superficial, which is a good thing. Easier to fix than something that's deeper. You know, the dorsal rami, that's like right as it exits the spinal cord. The further away from the spinal cord, the, <laughs> the better the recovery. <laughs> okay. That's why like, you know, people get their fingers chopped off. They can reattach it and they regain feeling because the nerve will regrow. Really? Um, that's kind of what's going on here with you. It's like it's been cut, and now I gotta see if I can reconnect the pieces. But we're not doing surgery here. Ooh, all that right hand side. Grr. Push that out, listen. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. There we go. Got it. Oh, this has gotta go. Excellent. Oh man. That was twice. Oh, five of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like five vertebrae. There you go. There you go. One. <laughs> that was C1, C0. So I'm going to come down a little bit into the lower part. C1, C2. There it is. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to let that do its thing. There you go. Oh, this is much better. I know we can't really see it on the camera, but yeah, that was much worse. Last it it's time. just it's like night and day. We still got a little bit of work to do here, but it looks like I still have the tone has come back to this part right here, but it's still not right here. We still have one, two, three of them left. Yeah, and that's mainly where I'm feeling. The okay, these might be and the stuff like that. okay. These might be the the worst ones or the bad ones. Yeah, this one came back nice. Can you see it on the camera? Or, eh. I don't know what's here. Well, you, you don't know what I'm saying? What you're looking at. I'm looking at... He's got nerve, like tone in his muscles. They're just muscular. They're, they're muscular on this side. And the tone has come back here. This was all flat last time he was in. Now, yeah. now this has come back. The nervous tone to this muscle here. I've just got to work on these three here. Now, did we do the green roller last time? No, we did not. Okay. It's 10. It's 10. Okay, cold. Cold. Too cold? No, no, it feels good, actually. All right. 
It's kind of like your peanut, the tennis ball. Come on, wake up back. Man, I need one of these for my lower back. <laughs> this is um, a knee Ken roller. I always put the links down in the description of the video. Like, I had an osteopath from Spain. He's like, where did you get that roller? And I was like, well, I always leave the links down there. But they're like 150 bucks. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> you know, unless you're going to use this every day on people, it, it doesn't, you know, get a little cheaper, get a cheaper one. <laughs> but... This is meant, you know, to be used over and over and over again. Doing okay? Mm -hmm. There's something different, you know, the different massage techniques or different soft tissue mobilization. When you roll over something like this, it can be more intense than like, let's say if I were to use my hands to massage. The rolling, the actual taking of the tissue and rolling over it is very effective. Well, no, I'm just wondering if you're sore right here. No. Not too bad when I roll over it? Okay. No. All right, all right, here we go. We can please go more. <laughs> well, I don't know if you should or what you know. Just... <laughs> no, I'm just saying, right here, right here. This is where you got like a knot on the left-hand side. Right there. I can feel what you're talking about. Let's just see it right here on the left. And I'm watching your muscles flicker up above it. Your trapezius muscles like, yeah. no. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. It's also along the paraspinal muscles, but this is what you need right here. It's almost right here, right here on the left. Doing okay? Yeah. Tight. Deep breath in again. Out. Here's the bad one. Good. Good. A little tight there. Deep breath in again. All the way out. Come on. I might have to use the other table. This one's too squishy. It is really tight, sorry. No, it's all right, that's what this is for. That's what my job is. It is. I take it that sorry back. <laughs> all right, deep breath <laughs> in. All the way up. Oh man, that was, now that I put a lot of pressure into. Feeling for knots. Now, as I work on you, I'm going to use a little bit of blue tansy. I watched another video where they were like going in there with a like a scraper or something, and the guy's back was black and red after and blue. Yeah. Is that something else or? No, it's just it's some people cute. bruise. Well, see, I don't think that it's. I'm of the mindset that you shouldn't dig on somebody to make them bleed. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if it cut, if it comes out, it comes out. But if you're going to bruise, you're going to bruise. But don't go so hard that, you know, sure, if you press on somebody hard enough, they will bruise regardless. I just kind of get that superficial tissue and see whatever comes out, comes out. And somebody that's really swollen... A lot will come out. All right, here we go. Hopefully some of this peppermint oil will relax it. There we go. Ooh. Oof. Like I'm going like underneath his, look at that. And this is, part of it is the, the 
the tone, yeah, the tone of the muscle isn't there, and I'm able to get under there that much. Now this arm, let's see. Now see that? I am not able to get under there the same way. So there is a little bit of what we call atrophy on this side. I've got to try to wake up those nerves. Now is it pretty painful when I do this, or is it? I'm gonna go, yeah, like right around that side. Right around the angle. It probably should be. I don't... Well, sometimes you, if you're numb and you can't feel it, you know, I need to know. No, no, yeah, definitely. You, I'm you can, definitely feel it. You're feel well because some people can't feel. You know, they're they're numb, and then you, ha I have to make a judgment call myself. You know about how deep to go. Some people just cannot feel. What I'm noticing the biggest change happen is when I address this knot down here, which I think is interesting, but I call it as I see it. Yeah, I noticed the biggest reaction up above here when I'm pushing down lower on the opposite side. Right there, I start to see the muscle contract. That's what I'm trying to wake up. So if it means pressing lower on T10 here, then it means pressing lower on T10. <laughs> it's coming out. It's doing good. Not that. All right, let's go up to the problem area. A little sore here? It's not too bad. Okay. But it but it definitely feels improved. I'm not gonna say it doesn't. Oh no, I, I don't even I don't expect a miracle to happen right away. I'm just trying to think, am I on the right track? Hmm. It's just like I want to grab this whole side and just <laughs> push it back down. <laughs> you can change this through stretching. So I'm warming all of this up so we can go ahead and push on this. It's top. It's sore here at all. Not feeling too much. Ooh, your low back like that. It was like, yeah, that feels better. There we go. I, <laughs> now it really looks good. Like it can't, like I overcompensated. <laughs> now it's like really tough. What does it feel like right now? It feels relaxed right now. This is all contracted now. So I'm curious to see what you feel when you get up. Right here. This is what I felt when you were sitting. Yeah, in there is where I have probably the least amount of uh feeling. Yeah. Yeah, we've got some oh, I'm sorry. I felt... It's hard to stay on track here. Here we go. Where is it? There's there it is. about as much pressure as I can on it. Here we go, you ready? Breathe. I'm gonna get it. It's not gonna feel the best. One down, that one let go. Oh, it's bad. Right there. Oh man, there it goes. All right, take a break. But I think I got to the bottom of it this time. Like I really felt it pull apart. There's a big piece of scar tissue in there. 
I'm always digging in there with trying to like massage that area out that you just did. So. Uh huh. Yeah, see, this is the superficial layer. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you can tell. It's like on the surface. I'm also going to have to check your lat. So you're going to be on your side as I do that. I'm just making you bright red. There's like no petechiae coming out. It's just, you're like, you're like a bright red rubber ball. What is that song? <laughs> so you're saying a lot of soreness right here, right? Yeah, that's, I feel, it's not really sore, it's just, like a piece of ropey feeling right here. Yeah. It just doesn't feel as right as the other side. I don't know how to explain it. But I think it's just all coming from that area that you were talking about. It could be. I'm just going to check it yeah. real quick. Just once in a while I'll find something, but like see that. Ugh. Your infraspinatus is just, it's almost like an avulsion where the muscle got torn off, but I, I don't think so. I feel like I like stretched it off and pulled it. I don't know. I don't know an what I did. An avulsion is where like a muscle gets torn off the bone. Ooh, okay. Yeah, and you would be in some serious pain after that kind of an injury. Um, I don't feel that. There's nothing like sagging. There's no... Okay. It's just a ton of scar tissue. No. You know, the rib doesn't just end here. It wraps around and attaches to the front. So I have to make sure that the whole rib from front to back is set okay. Now, as you're laying here, what are you feeling? Are you still feeling the numbness? I kind of just run my finger down like that, like lightly. Right now, it probably feels closer to normal. Okay. And each, like, I mean, it does, even if know? it's just a little bit, because it's going to take like 48 yeah. hours to wake that nerve back up. The side feels good, feels normal. I just can't believe it how much less the swelling has gone down back here. That's a huge statement right there. Are you sore here? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Definitely all of these nerves in the periphery, they kind of just, like little fibers, they kind of come out here and they, they're called nerve endings. And for whatever reason, your nerve endings just got sheared mm -hmm. with that motion. Okay, I'm coming into the ribs. I don't know if you want to come back around here on there. We're trying to wake them back up by kind of coming through each rib here. What, what clued me in was the fact that he said he had pain at the base of the scapula. And that's exactly what I do at my house. I try and get in between those ribs yeah. like you're doing. Yeah, because that's where all the intercostal nerves, and when you turned, you kind of frayed them. And yeah, this is a hard one to get, but if you can, oof, see, I feel it. Just take them one by one. And then the scapula is kind of in the way here. So you kind of, that's why you'll see me put the arm behind the back and I'll try to get as far up under there as I can. Like that, <laughs> okay. 
all right, all right. So how do we fix this? This is what I'm going to try to fix this prominent here. And I wait for it to finally sink in, and we go to the other side. to the side just a little bit so I can get in there. Oh, right there. Are you okay? I'm sorry. That's what you need right there. I, I still think, yeah, the, this vertebral prominence area, that goose egg on the back, it's the left. Again, you don't want the muscle to re-spasm, so you have to take it one step at a time. Oh, T2, T3. I know you're like, what am I doing? Head back for me. Perfect, good. And then other side. Bottom leg straight, top leg bent. Head back, protect your neck. That's it. Perfect. Excellent. Stretching, believe it or not, is more important than what I do. <laughs> Once I get you started, it's your job to continue. Yes. yes. Well, you can feel how much pressure this dinner roll is. I kind of just want to like... <laughs> Open your chest up. There we go. <laughs> no, that's right here. Okay. Now, to me, this feels a lot better. Yeah. The tone has come back just from the little bit that we did. Now, go ahead and reach behind and, like, feel feel the skin. It feels less. It feels more. Like you have more sensation? I do, yeah. Like, I, I can actually feel it on my back as well. You know? Like you can feel the skin? It's not as numb, yeah. And it was definitely way more swollen than, than inflamed last time I saw you. It's definitely gone down. Yeah, this yeah, especially the goose egg, like you were saying. <laughs> yeah. I know it was very bad last week. <laughs> yeah. I wish they could have seen it, but I didn't take a picture. Uh, oh, look at that! Let me take a picture. That looks so. Uh, I just really didn't think it would improve that much. I mean, that went way down. That's like fifty percent better. And then, so you've just got to keep working on that at home. It's pushing that. Get it this guy. back. So yes. I should have someone kind of push down. On my or you could take like a. Some people take like a bag of rocks and they put yeah. it. <laughs> Yes, okay. they, yeah. <laughs> I might have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you know, and then remember, your arms are up over your head. Okay. When you're on it, head is back, okay? That kind of, see how that makes the vertebral prominence disappear. Right. You got to stretch into that. And then, if yeah, if you put weight on the front of it. Yeah, you'll go back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, you got it? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>